Hey guys, so big news. Minhee Jin, New Jeans Mama, has decided she's given up. She's going to quit the board of directors over at Adore, thereby canceling her shareholder agreement. I don't know about you, but in times like these, that song from The Wizard of Oz always pops up. Yes, let the glorious news be spread. The wicked old witch at first is dead. It is really amazing how many people remember this song after a toxic environment, especially in the workplace, ends. A reign of terror ends. And suddenly everybody is watching The Wizard of Oz. So Minnie Jane can take her manila envelope and collect her things on the 16th floor. And we also got news that Honey's case of bullying that she tried to bring to the labor board. Well, labor board just says, girl, bye. Girl, bye. Bye. We'll get into that. So which one do you want to go over first? I guess Minnie Jin is the bigger news. A quick recap, and we'll go into the full statement later, is that she announced her legal representative. She's resigning as inside director of Adore. She's going to cancel the shareholder agreement as if that were her decision to begin with. But let's save one of her many faces. And she also said that she is going to take legal action against Hybe for violation of the shareholder agreement. So she's going to try to get her stock options no matter what. At this point, it looks like she just doesn't want to produce. She doesn't want to do the work of being the new jeans mama, which is exactly the opposite of the stance she publicly made at her many press conferences and interviews saying that she doesn't care about the money. It's not about collecting her bag and waging this war against time. It was all supposedly about her love for new jeans and being a music producer. But as we've seen, that's like the last thing on her priority list. And it's the thing that she's thrown away in order to save herself and then continue to go after the stock options when it looks like there's very little chance that that would work. If she were actually telling the truth that she only wanted to be a producer, she had the job offer. She was allowed to come back to be the producer of New Jeans until the end of the contract. So what is that? That's like a five-year job guarantee in the K Korean entertainment industry at the top entertainment firm. And no, she's just kind of throwing that away. And not only that, she would still be able to stay on the board of directors and have some say in the overall management of the company. She just threw all of that away. Oh, she accused Hybe of being at peak level of moral decay and that the dirty media play would continue and that the public is getting wise to Hybe's media play. She is literally just confessing her own sins and telling on herself. And if moral decay is at its peak, I'd be worried about whether them cookies you know, may have E. coli or something. Hybe responded very demurely and extremely succinctly in about 60 Korean characters, not words even, characters, basically two sentences. And they said, Adore is regretful about board member Minnie Jin's unilateral decision to quit. We will provide the best support so that new genes can grow and develop. So remember guys, new jeans can't go anywhere. Contractually, they are there at a door for the next five years unless they want to pay an exit fee in the hundreds of millions of dollars. So they will have to stay at a door and just have a new producer. Just like the rest of the world has to go through. You, Different bosses, different times, or different collaborators. 
because let's transition into the honey issue. What we saw from the labor minister, they just said like, look, this claim for bullying, it's not valid because you're not a worker to begin with. Why is that important? It is important in terms of you have the law and you have this, what I like to call Judge Judy style justice of like what you think is right or wrong. So Minnie Jin with her media play, because it doesn't really fit into strong legal cases. It's more about trying to enact the passions. What she was trying to do was establish like, was there bullying or not? If there was bullying, that's really bad. However, even if there were bullying for real against Honey, in terms of the law in Korea, labor laws, she wouldn't be protected. There's nothing that the law could do to punish Hype. Why? Because there's a distinct difference between whether you're an employee of a company and whether you are, like in her case, a freelancer or a contracted entity. The way that the law is looking at idols and entertainers and people like Honey is that you're not an employee that's required to come to work at a certain time and have to have a boss and have to listen. So the more of, let's say, a slave you are, the more of a slave you are, it's better in the sense of legal protections or that is what is used to do a backdoor to get worker status is that if you really are somebody who is not in control of your actions and your work, you become an employee that has tons of labor laws supposedly protecting you. If not, it's basically like you are the vendor, like maybe you're the one that the company hires to deliver sodas. You know, you just go in, you do your job, and then you leave. And that is the classification that Honey w w is in, was in. It's clear that they are in. The bunny uncles at the National Assembly would have known that. That's why this thing was super odd. First of all, why was it odd? Honey did not file this claim herself. As you would think, if you were just a really mistreated employee, you're the one that goes to the labor board. You're the one that does all the paperwork and files and then is in contact. A fan, a fan filed this labor complaint on behalf of Honey with the labor ministry. That is very odd to me because that means anybody can file a labor complaint on behalf of somebody else, that makes no sense. How can a fan do it unless the fan was a bunny uncle with some political connections or this was a setup? But even if it was a setup, I'm surprised that the labor <laughs> ministry allows this kind of registration on behalf of, like, from random strangers. I, I mean, how close is that bunny uncle or that fan to honey? to know about all this stuff. They just said that officially they saw the video of Honey telling her story about being bullied and then they went ahead and filed it on her behalf. Number one, that's really sus. Number two, it becomes extremely clear that her visit to the National Assembly was a huge setup with a lot of co-conspirators. This was like almost like collaboration on the level reminiscent of how civil society devolves when you have such complicity. Why is it so shady? It's that they knew that she wouldn't qualify under the labor laws. So had she qualified under the labor laws, now this is also stretched, like you are stretching a taffy across continents. Because here was the end goal. And I'll tell you like how much of a stretch it was even under the best circumstances that they could actually score a goal. And yet they went through with this over at the National Assembly, exposing themselves to this much amount of ridicule. They probably thought that they wouldn't be, but this looks so ridiculous. What they were trying to do with Honey 
her co-conspirators, was try to get Hybe as the perpetrator, a violator of the Labor Standards Act, where if she were an employee, she could argue under the Labor Standards Act that they're not supposed to be bullied or ha face workplace harassment, Article 76, Paragraph 2, an act that causes physical or mental pain to another worker or worsens the work environment by taking advantage of one's superior position or relationship in the workplace beyond the appropriate scope of work. So essentially, the way that they were trying to mentally pretzel twist Honey's story about the hallway would have to involve physical or mental pain to her, also involve somebody who is her superior taking advantage of that superior position in the workplace and moving it beyond the appropriate scope of work. Even if Honey were an employee, how would the manager of another labels group have a superior position to Honey? How would that manager have ever violated a position that's not superior anyways? It's like in a completely different world or category. And... Even if it were, even if that manager were at a door, he is not, he or she is not going to be superior in relationship to the idol. But all of that is moot because she's not an employee. She is more like a subcontractor or a vendor or an independent contractor or a freelancer. And therefore, just clinically and legally from the Labor Standards Act that affects the Labor Commission. That's why they're saying so long. However, now it becomes extremely clear how the bunny uncles were panting their last gasp of air to try to push Honey over the finish line. If you remember that frustration that the one bunny uncle had when Honey didn't understand his question, and his question was one of the cruxes of being able to manipulate this situation. She was not prepared. She didn't even know the game, it seems like, 100%. And this bunny uncle was mad because he asked her, did you have somebody above you giving orders? That is super important. To a person in the regular scope of things, especially an idol. And so he was so frustrated because she didn't understand the question. She didn't even answer the question. And so therefore that hurdle of trying to get her into the back door of being classified as an employee so that she could get the Labor Standards Act applied to her failed because she wasn't able to establish that she was somebody who was under direct orders and had to essentially live like an employee. And the reason why there is that back door in Korean law is that they're trying to protect workers who are unjustly being labeled as freelancers so that the employer can save money on not paying them health insurance, not paying out their pension, and not giving them job security by being able to counter that. But she is mocking all of the people who really do struggle and have a fight that they're trying to win if they're even fighting at all. And she's just making a mockery out of that safeguard for actual workers who are being abused. And so the bunny uncle couldn't establish that. He was totally upset by that. Also, another bunny uncle, because now it gets complicated, because in order for them to be able to say, Hybe is guilty of bullying Honey and therefore is in violation of the Labor Standards Act, they had to try to make the boss Hybe 
instead of a door. If anything, it would be all within a door, and the person above her that would be abusing her position and authority would be Minnie Jin, especially at the time. So <laughs> it it's it's ridiculously flawed, and anybody would have seen that going in and would never even let Honey enter the building or entertain the thought. Therefore, the fact that she went to the National Assembly and took precedence over a lot of other cases, legitimate cases, makes it extremely clear that there was a lot of funny cookie business going on. And so that's why that bunny uncle was trying to link it to Hybe's code of conduct, which is just a voluntary guideline. It's not legal anyway, but they were trying their best to try to make it look like Honey was an employee of Hybe. Therefore, Hybe would be the one to suffer the consequences if there were any violations, whereas legally she is just under a door. She's not even under Hybe. A door is essentially just renting space in the Hybe building. And so she would not even be able to launch an attack against Hybe as the one that's supposed to compensate her. But again, all of it is unnecessary and moot because she's not even classified as an employee. Now, it is true that there should be more protections for people who are in the entertainer and idols position, whereas it's almost like a hybrid. Not exactly an employee, but really when you look at it, they're not exactly just some freelancer who you just, you know, basically email and say like, okay, why don't you deliver me a design to something? We'll just get it to me on this date, but you do your work wherever you are do it. And also what's important is that the freelancer does the work with their own equipment. They're not required to use the office equipment or the company's equipment. Therefore, really being independent. You're just literally just paying somebody to deliver a product to you, a service to you at the at an agreed to date and price. And so with an idol though, they're a little bit hybrid. And so even in my situation where I had to do news, I wasn't even considered an employee. And in the eyes of the labor ministry, none of those protections applied to me. So let's go back to Minnie Jin's actual statement and see if there are any more morsels or nuggets from it. She literally called it a hellish dispute with Hybe that lasted over seven months. And now she thinks that it would be a waste of her time because there are no signs of change and Hybe is not admitting to its wrongdoings. Hello, Cauldron, Black, Isle 16, a thousand of them. What is this, the, call, the, the, the pot calling the kettle Black? Anyhow, so she said that she hoped that Hybe would admit their own mistakes. She can never admit any mistakes. And she said that she was trying to protect new genes, I guess by abandoning them and throwing them on the side of the road. And she's still sticking to her story that this was all about whistleblowing emails that she sent last April. This also doesn't match the timeline because if we see the evidence from Hybe that well, like well from starting in March, they were starting to audit. And it wasn't because of this whistleblowing, it was because of indications from other people, namely those, remember those investors that met with Minnie Jin and they're just like, okay, we don't wanna get in trouble, so we have to report this to Hybe ourselves. Then she also said, Hybe, far from showing remorse, committed the folly of lying and creating an illegal audit, framing her. 
and accusing her of trying to usurp management rights and leading to a witch hunt. And she said that it has been so obvious that it was because of her whistleblowing, because she had to be such a great person, that that's why Hybe was acting this way to her. If somebody in the company was upset that there were a few dance moves, maybe some hairstyling or some photos that like somebody else was copying, they wouldn't do some sort of malicious audit. Number one, the audit is just the normal fact of life that happens on a regular schedule in many companies. And then especially in this type of situation with Hybe as the major shareholder of Adore, they would definitely want to have regular audits. But in this type of situation, of course, there was so many machinations behind the scenes and you can't hide all of your manipulations forever. And so this was Hybe being able to get evidence and it wouldn't be over just because she said oh my god they're they're copying me yet mini jin calls hybe hypocritical and contradictory and saying that hybe has sicked all of these other sub labels to file lawsuits against her or attack her no all these people would stay out of it if they could, they would really, I mean, this is just any type of corporate culture and, and even, you know, not just in Korea, but you don't want to stick your foot in and uh, have unnecessary drama. No, these people are mad. They want their pound of flesh, Mini Jin, and they're coming for it. I mean, you done really kicked the hornet's nest. So she goes on and on and on about how this is so unfair to her and saying that she has been damaged due to Hybe's violation of the shareholders agreement. Minijin, the moment that you started weaving your web of lies, deceits, takeover attempts, backstabbing and betrayal and bad mouthing, that is when the shareholder agreement started to collapse. I think she's projecting here now. She's saying Hive's moral hazard has already reached its peak. I mean, from what we've seen, jeez, jeez, New Jeans Mama, like you have no morals. It has been one low, classless blow after another. Just real dirty. But then, of course, she's saying that Hive is dirty. Hive has the moral hazard. And people are. Now wising up to Hybe's manipulations. Sorry, it's all you. You are literally self-confessing here. She calls Hybe the worst company. She's fighting against the worst company. And people won't understand what she, what she has had to endure. I'm sure you've had to do an, endure a lot. If you create these many enemies against these many people, against... People with power who are just holding back on it? You're probably going to have to endure a lot more. I mean, you thought that was bad. I mean, wait till people just, you know, just say like, screw being this whole demure and mindful thing. It was just a TikTok meme. Let's go. And then the end was just cheap and confusing. She tried to throw a quote that I believe one of the B-Lift executives had said when they were defending themselves and trying to flip that and use that against them, but it doesn't make any sense. Basically, she's saying like the actions driven by one person's malice should never be allowed to damage the essence of the business. That was just really, really bad of, of you all. First of all, that's not even a very strong statement, especially to, I mean, that is the worst ending to a story. But she's literally confessing here. The action of one person's malice should never be allowed to damage the essence of the business. That is essentially her. The malice of one person, one 
horrible. I mean, that is exactly it. She is that one person, that one person creating so much havoc that could destroy an entire corporation and all the jobs and livelihoods of people in that building. That one person. Of course that one person shouldn't be allowed to damage the essence of the business, but there are a lot of these one persons running around, okay? And they all have degrees from the Jezebel Institute of Treachery. And I don't think it's a woman's only school anymore. Maybe just in name, but I am sure it is a co-ed institution. So it looks like her position has severely weakened. We see her tricks. We see her fraying loyalty, support system. Because these bunny uncles in the National Assembly, they probably turned on her. Because, you know, like, remember a long time ago, if, if you were of this generation where you had to do, like, the fundraising drives at school, like, let's say you were selling candy bars or I guess even, I remember, like, wrapping paper or something, but you didn't have the product in hand, like, and you had to take an order from somebody who was going to be buying it to donate to your school. And then when your teacher gave you like the chocolate bars per se, then you would go find that person and hand it to them. I think New Jean's mama was taking way too many orders that she could never, ever, ever fulfill. And I doubt those chocolate bars showed up. And so these bunny uncles were probably pissed that they didn't get their cookies and just turned on her like this. And then also have been exposed to be participants in such a laughing stock that there is absolutely in no way, shape, or form that this case with Honey ever could have passed the legal test. And the fact that they made such a big deal out of it and supported her and threw their lives on the line, their, their career and reputation on the line for this little cookie tart shows that how culpable they are and how intertwined in some web they are with this New Jeans Mama. So Wicked New Jeans Mama, hope you enjoy your new found freedom because she unfollowed the New Jeans a, a girl's accounts and also Hybe and then is posting like stuff about freedom and liberation on her own social media. I hope you enjoy that and then maybe you can reflect upon what you did because you're going to need it. And please do not hire somebody to write the self-reflection statements that the judge will probably ask you for. Perhaps you should try practicing and writing them yourself. All right, guys, what do you think? Put your comments below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.